Well, I've got my pack waiting to comment on that Sadiq Khan interview, but also to talk about my next guest, because the 2024 presidential race so far looks like to be a rerun, potentially, of Donald Trump against Joe Biden. But this weekend, the Grand Swallow commentators claimed that Trump couldn't yet be disqualified from the ballot altogether over his alleged attempts to inspire insurrection. My next guest may have some pretty strong feelings about that. Vivek Ramaswamy is the breakout star of the Republican race so far. The only one, frankly, to rival Trump for any kind of publicity or momentum. There's just one problem. He hasn't really explained yet how he'll actually beat Trump. Well, Vivek joins me now. Great to see you again. It's good to see you, Pierce. How are you? Well, first of all, an apology, because I've always called you Vivek, and then you very kindly corrected us all and said you are Vivek as in cake. That's correct. I appreciate best efforts, but uh, <laughs> I usually save the airtime for substance. But thank you. I appreciate Well, look, we've that. done a few interviews, Vivek, so far. And yes. obviously, when it started, not many people knew much about you other than your entrepreneurial stuff. Now, since the last debate, uh, you've become incredibly well-known, very well talked about, and a lot of uh, unfriendly fire is coming your way. So my first question is, how are you handling being now in the proper spotlight of being a presidential candidate? I'm fine with it. And I do think, Pierce, that's part of the process. We jumped into this race early on, going in eyes wide open, knowing that politics is a dirty sport. It's filled with falsehoods. You may have seen a report over the weekend that actually one of the other candidates' large super PACs was taking credit to their donors for the donors, for the attacks that have been manufactured against me. That's okay. I can handle it. And to tell you the truth, if I'm asking the people of this country to ask me to represent the U.S., across the table from Xi Jinping. I better be able to sit across the table from other candidates or from left-wing media or anybody else. And so we're doing just fine with it. I'm focused on what we want to achieve for this country, shutting down the administrative state, keeping us out of World War III, declaring independence from China, growing the economy, reviving national pride. These are my actual focus areas, not some side attacks that can... I really could care less for. OK, look, you've, you've certainly been so far, I would argue, the most pro-Trump of the other candidates. But that raises the question, if he's so great, even to the extent you would pardon him of any crimes he may be convicted of, why would you run against him? Why not just let Donald Trump run again and potentially win again and maybe you get a, a good job out of it? In other words, if you keep talking him up, how does that help you? So the answer is, I'm not looking at what's going to help myself or not. I'm looking at speaking the truth. And I do think he was an excellent president, as judged by results. But I'm going to deliver something that he did not. National unity. Uniting this country is a top objective for me. I'm 38 years old. I am the youngest person ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. And, peers, we're reaching the next generation in droves. We're reviving national pride amongst young Americans. 40% of my 100,000 plus donors are first time ever donors to the Republican Party in any form. That is unheard of. That number is normally 2%. And so, yes, on 90% of policy areas, I do agree with Donald Trump and I respect his accomplishments. But there's more to a president than just being a policy book in a binder. Part of this is how we reunite this nation. I think I'll be best positioned to accomplish that. And I look forward to working with Donald Trump when I hope he's my advisor frankly, my mentor in my first year in office. That much I will take. But that's how I think this is going to play out. Uh, you managed to say that you thought Donald Trump would be your advisor as president with a straight face there, Vivek. I, I do. I think he's somebody who has a lot of experience. I don't want to start with a standing start. I want to build on those four years of experience. No, I can see... where he I left off, just to explain. the I can, agenda to the next level. No, no, I can see why you would want him as an advisor. It's the idea of Trump playing second yeah. fiddle to anyone, I think, is highly unlikely. Uh, and I, I guess my overriding view is, how do you beat him? He's so far ahead. You, know, you had a good debate, I thought, in many ways. You got a lot of publicity out Thank of it. You. But it hasn't really moved the needle on the polls. Trump is so far ahead. He looks unstoppable. And all these indictments, all they seem to be doing is helping him. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I, I'm dead set against these indictments. That is not how I want to win this election. Seeing the cop opposition eliminated, no, that's the wrong way to do it in this country. I will say this, though, Piers. I started, people said you started at 0% in March. I said, nope. I started at 0.0% in March. I'm now a solid second or third in nearly every major national poll that's coming out. And many people in this country didn't even know who I was six months ago. Most people couldn't pronounce my name until two weeks ago. And so the fact of the matter is we're on our way up. 
I'm still introducing myself to the country. And I'm confident that we're going to be successful. Okay, I'm talking me, to you, let me from, ask a, you this. from a farm in New Hampshire. We're meeting voters, and I think we're, we're very confident about where we're you heading. You are going to have to take the gloves off with Trump at some stage, maybe on a debate stage. So what, what don't you like about Donald Trump? Well, look, it's less about what I don't like about him, but what I do think this country needs to go further. I will unite this country. And if Trump was going to do that in his four years, that would have already happened. He delivered great results, but I think we have to actually speak about this country in a way that reaches so the next divisive. generation. Talk about what it means to be an American. He's too divisive. Pierce, I, I'm not in this race to run against anybody, but I am unified. Well, you are, but yeah, but I Vivek, in this you race are. to be unified. Vivek, you, and I think you, that's... Well, I know, well, I know. The, Look, this all, that that's, sounds, that's the essence of what's different about my candidacy. Piece. That sounds great, but you are, you are in a race, and you are going to have to try and beat yes. Donald Trump. And, and it's interesting and my, to hear you admit, to the you admit that the, the dividing point for you is he's too divisive, right? Well, I think I am more unifying. That's the answer. And I think that that's more important. And the way we're going to unite this country is not by tearing down other people who have made great contributions to this country, Donald Trump being high on that list among them, but by actually articulating what this country stands for, answer what it means to be an American at a moment where we're in the middle of a national identity crisis. Fill that void in the heart of the millennial generation and younger with an actual vision of national identity instead of woke poison or any other poison that fills that void. That's how we win. Well, you have We've a lot of things, Vivek. We've been running something it, for a long time. It, it, we got to run, start running to something. Okay. That's what I'm doing. There's a lot of stuff about you I really like. You know, I, a, you come on my show a lot, which I love, and you, you do a lot of interviews, and you're up front, and you take the tough questions. You go on lots of places where you might get a hard time. I love the energy. I love the dynamism and everything else. But there are aspects of some Thank of you. your policy stuff which I really don't like, one of which is your Fair. position on Ukraine. And I want to read you, this is a tweet that you did on the day the war started. Putin is a bully. The way to stop a bully is to punch him in the nose, you said. Now, now your position is you should just give, unless I'm wrong, you should, Ukraine should just give Putin the land he's stolen with his illegal war. I don't know how you equate those two statements. So, Pierce, I think there's two things here. One is we should have never been in this situation in the first place. Because if the U.S. actually had energy independence, if we drilled, we fracked, we were a net exporter of energy, Putin would have never had the leverage to go after Ukraine. But now being where we are, it is our job to make sure that we secure peace and advance American interests without sleepwalking into World War III. That is what I'm leading us to do. But and how I think have that you moved? The answer is I don't okay, want to but just, How have you moved yeah. from a guy who illegally invades a country a democratic sovereign country, yes. you said the only way to stop this bully, Putin, is to punch him in the nose. But when Ukraine, in yes. my view, valiantly fight for their territory and their people, and Putin still takes a load of their land, your answer to the bully is to now give him what he's taken illegally. No, that's not correct, actually. It's going to be to require a major concession from that bully so that we don't ratchet this up to the next it's level. It's a third and of the country you want to give him. No, no, no. Pierce, Pierce, I think you're either, I mean, I, and it's not your job to know every aspect of everything I've said. If you're questioning on me on it, I would ask you to know what I've said countless times. I would actually require Putin to exit his military alliance with China. That is the big demand and requirement we will have for any deal of any kind. That Russia-China military alliance is the single greatest threat to the West and to the United States as we know it. Putin is in Xi Jinping's arms. Communist China is fundamentally hostile to the United States. And I have a clear vision for how to pull Russia apart from China. We will end the Ukraine war on terms that leave Ukraine's sovereignty intact. I will note, Piers, I'm skeptical that that's even the path that Ukraine is on right now. So that's a win for Ukraine, but more importantly, it's a win well, for the U.S. It's not a win for Ukraine, that, though. You if, know you, what? if you were president of the United States I, I and, you, and you than, tell them they have to losing give... losing sovereignty. Yeah, but giving a bully what he's taken illegally is not, to me, strong leadership, is it? Well, Piers, I'm not giving anybody what he's taken. The fact of the matter is we have to honor our commitments. We had a commitment to Ukraine in 1994. We fulfilled that commitment. But James Baker also made a commitment to Gorbachev in 1990 on behalf of the U.S., saying that NATO would expand not one inch past East Germany. Turns out NATO has expanded far more after the fall of the USSR than when the USSR ever okay, existed. But do, so do I you, do think okay, but do you, that do we you should still, be clear okay, that NATO I, should not admit Ukraine to NATO. Okay. But I want to be really clear about this, Pierce. I'm not letting... Putin, has, his actions are craven. I've said so. But 
I don't trust Putin. I do trust him to follow his self-interest. Is he still a bully? And we is will he still do a, a deal that causes him to exit. We will, I mean, many autocrats around the world are bullies. Putin is one of them. Okay. But the fact of the matter is you have to actually do a deal that advances everybody's self-interest. Okay. Require Russia to exit its partnership with China. Okay. That's the key to the kingdom to secure peace and keep us out of World War III. Vivek, we've run out of time on this interview, but I, you know what I'd love to do with you? I, I feel like I've interviewed you a lot, but for, you know, five to ten minutes at a time. I don't think, yeah. as you get better and better known, people want to know more about you as a human being. I would love to get the chance to sit down Thank with you. you and have a proper one-on-one -on -one about who you are, where you've come from, because I think you are igniting this whole presidential race in an exciting way. I don't agree with you about some of the stuff you're saying, not least Ukraine, but I do okay. love the way that you're out there doing your thing, and I would love to get a chance to get to know you better. I enjoy our exchanges. It would be bizarre if we agreed on everything, right? So let's yep. do that. Join us on the campaign trail. I'm talking to you from our campaign bus. Okay. Ride the bus with us. We'll spend a day together. I'd enjoy that. And would... you can also see how some of the audiences here in the U.S. are responding. Yeah. I think it's it's really motivating to me, but it's it's quite something to see. So Fin Final question before I let you go, and I want a quick answer. Yeah. If you were president of the United States, and you might be, in a year or so time, what's the first thing you would do? What's your number one priority? Implement a 75% headcount reduction in the federal bureaucrat base and shut down government agencies that should not exist. That's how you revive the lifeblood of a constitutional republic. It's also how you grow the economy. That's what I'll start on on day one. Vivek Ramaswamy, you're a fascinating guy, uh, and your race is exciting people, good and bad and ugly, but that's the way it often is. I look forward to meeting with you properly, face-to-face, -face, and having a more in-depth chat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Piers. I look forward to that.